Alrighty guys, so this is our pre-Dragon Con video. You can see here, we are in the workshop. We're trying to get all of our stuff done. And I remembered one very important thing to me that I haven't done yet, so let's uh, flip this bad boy around. Take kind of a look at all the stuff we're trying to finish. So this is a last minute piece so that hopefully we can come home halfway through the con and uh, ship it. This is uh, Arcane 21's Magwell, which freakishly, the only error I've had in this batch of Arcanes just stopped working. It didn't run out of filament. It doesn't make any sense. And when you're doing things like 34 hour prints uh, with filament that's as expensive as the Voodoo, uh, that is a real shame. But uh, we've got another printer ready to go. We've got a lot of stuff on deck. We're very excited to see how that plays out. But this video is, uh, cause during Dragon Con, a few things happen. One of which is, man, we gotta finish this lightsaber too. And it is just uh, crazy how complicated lightsaber world is. We've been trying to print and prototype some stuff like this. So uh, one thing that's super important to me that we have to kind of get off of our plate is I promised a while ago that I would make a video kind of comparing uh, Project Scabbard to some of the other options out there. Uh, for the purposes of this video and to keep it brief and kind of flow uh, train of thought style because I just do not have the time we had a client emergency this month to make a proper in-depth multi-camera angle video about all of this. Uh, so for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna do this all in, in one shot. So try and make all of these look as presentable as we can and we'll get to that in a minute, but these are all vastly different price points. Uh, we've marketed Scabbard as the nicest thing on the market right now, which I truly believe for me and my needs uh, it is, but I want to talk about other options, some of which are readily available, some of which are not, and then the differences between those options. So uh, things that I personally really like. I like things that have a pretty stiff back to them. I think that that forms well to the body and provides a good base. Things that I like, uh, buckets that are uh, pretty well fitted to the magazines, and this is and isn't, this is uh, doing the best job. Keep in mind, this is a very expensive product made specifically by uh, John Willis over at SOE. It's some of the nicest stuff I've ever used. I use SOE uh, for other uh, activities that I'll leave up to you to determine. Um, and I like it when things are, are pretty firmly attached. So I also like big straps uh, and I really like this rubberized uh, strap material. This is the one thing uh, we did not accomplish. So instead of doing a rubberized strap here, we just went bigger on the strap and it's ultimately accomplishing the same goal of holding it uh, closely to the body. So we're filming at 60 FPS and 1080p. Hopefully the details come through. So uh, before we go too much farther, I'm not gonna go grab. There hasn't been an Apex Weapon Systems or Apex Weapon Solution uh, sort of magazine thigh rig. Uh, you have to be, thigh rigs are either you love it or you hate it and there's all sorts of schools of thought there. I'm a huge fan of them, uh, subloads, thigh rigs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they put my magazines exactly where I want them, on whichever side of my body I want them to be, and I'm just muscle memory wired at this point to uh, do that. So I like how Apex does some of his stuff, but it's also pretty cobbled together from other parts. Uh, that said, these metal, I don't even know what you would call these, uh, are great. They reinforce the corners. They keep it strong. I've had this for like six or seven years and it is still going strong. It also has a feature that I really like in addition to the rubberized strap, which neither of these have. It uh, has big, quick release buckles. Again, the bigger the buckles are, the happier I am with them. I think that the, the larger they are, the sturdier, uh, which is why I really like the one that this attaches to with the belt. Uh, this is pseudo modular, as is this. You can remove uh, these and switch the angles and orientations of it, but more or less I would rather it be where I want it to be. Uh, this is pretty permanently affixed uh, in a slightly different um, way. So these can't be switched from side to side. However, uh, they are in the configuration that I, I want them to be. So right off the bat, we're gonna jump into some of our features. First off, Apex Weapon Systems or Apex Weapon Solutions. I always just call them AWS and try and get uh, to the point. It's very difficult to get a hold of these days. I haven't seen current work from them in a while. So I think that that's off the table. This was crazy cheap, crazy durable, really good like Army Navy surplus refit stuff. And I think that it did the job just fine for what we needed it to. However, I, uh, I hate these straps. I hate rubberized straps for small targets. So something like uh, this, trying to get something like this to fit. Uh, you can see I'm having a difficult time now. Obviously it's spaced for something else and it did it did the job just fine. Uh, this was supposed to be a triple double as like kind of a feature. Uh, Boss Tack up in the UK 
uh, decided to make them triple triples. That made it a little bit bigger than I wanted for my purposes, but I do want to show that once you fill this pouch with three, uh, it does get a little bit tighter. Now, it doesn't really know how exactly it wants to do that. There we go, that's, that's better. Uh, my big problem is that these are a little bit too loose for my needs. I like it when they go higher up on the magazine and leave less room for them to fall. I also think that this is sort of a, uh, a softer way with the stitches here than creating dedicated pockets. Something about this is very floopy when not uh, completely full. Uh, I do like the, uh, the pseudo rubberized fit here. I think that they both have an amount of rubberized material in them. Again, just the more material you have, the more that elastic can do work for you. Uh, and then the strapping is other than that pretty consistent. They're both double straps on the back. And then this one is a single strap up top, but it's huge uh, with a quick disconnect. And then this one is uh, a double strap up here. Uh, again, I think that's kind of an attempt to make up for the smaller buckles with a double quick disconnect. So they both kind of have the feature of detaching from the body relatively easily. I just, uh, I guess my big thing is that I like that these flaps automatically close. Like this is very nice to me and then holds firm. Uh, my biggest thing is I really like the panel on the back of this being solid. It's kind of what's giving this its shape under weight. And then you can just kind of see the, the over engineering that goes into this. This is triple stitching, uh, double stitching on all the side panels, particularly in the stressy points, uh, double stitching here and then double double, uh, attaching the elastic so that it's never going anywhere. Plenty of extra material so that it'll fit everyone. Lots of paneling and stitching on here as well as multiple layers of material, which without like adding too much bulk gives this sort of a stiffness to it. And I feel the same way about the flaps like by folding them over for double material and then double stitching everything and making sure our Velcro is exactly where we want it to be. We just wind up with what I consider to be an ultimately uh, superior product. And I know that a lot of uh, people who do Danger Boy stuff, particularly in North America, but some abroad uh, feel the same way. And then, I mean, this is the, the purpose of this video is that I agreed to do this video because the UK was like Drax saying that there are no other options and there are. It's worth noting that this is I think about a third. Uh, it's somewhere between one third and one half to the price of uh, scabbard rig and this is available all the time from BOF uh, whereas the scabbard rig is available one time on Kickstarter right now and I'm trying to launch this video in a timely fashion so that you can make that choice if uh, it interests you. Obviously personal bias aside, uh, this is a perfect example of why double stitching is so important here and here. This has only been to, uh, I think, two events, but it's already kind of starting to show its stuff. And then uh, single, yeah, I mean, the use of a single panel of fabric. Now, it's reinforced by the Velcro here, which is nice. And the Velcro was something that I asked for. I wanted to be able to put uh, morale patches on the side flaps here. Uh, that might be a personal design choice that I think kind of fell flat. And then ultimately, I just want to say that uh, this is solid and it worked pretty well. My biggest issue was I wanted a double double and got a triple double or I wanted a double triple and got a triple triple. And so when I ran it with the number of magazines I had at the time, which was seven, uh, and these are open like this, they had a bad habit of doing exactly that. And especially if you don't purposefully find this and get it down, because there's so much flack to where these can go. Whereas these, because of how they're built, they kind of, huh, they kind of try and find their way home, I think. Uh, this folds up a whole lot. And I think if I could offer Boff one piece of advice, not that I made any tactical gear, I just helped prototype this and took advantage of John's years and years of experience to make the correct choices. It would be that I think this has all of the DNA to be fantastic if it had the same back panel that the scabbard rig does. I think that that goes a long way in adding to the overall quality, finish, and niceness of this. You can always add more straps. You can always add the feature of pulling it through so that it can be ambidextrous. But I think that adding the back panel and starting with that as your base is a, uh, a huge difference. And then I also want to, in the spirit of fair play, uh, be very fair. I think pointing these up is huge. It makes it super easy to rip uh, this up and pull it that way. Uh, this is still fine, but I really liked having these angled up the way that these work. Uh, and then the only other thing is like using more material in certain places, double and triple stitching so that you don't get these super loose flaps that are like uneven. So we've got like, I don't know, 
like a centimeter, you can just kind of tell that the consistency here is nowhere near the same level of trim and finish that this is. And so that's why I'm telling people that this is ultimately a superior product to this. Uh, but I do want to point out that Boff has done a charity offering of something similar to this in the same super cool bat fabric. Uh, and then Boff has also uh, seriously improved his pattern for this style of a uh, magazine retention holster. I don't think that he really likes uh, doing the subloads or the thigh rigs because I don't think that it's his personal style uh, of operating. However, um, I have seen some of his work on Etsy and despite the fact that it is much less expensive, I think that it's better than it was when I picked this up at Foam Fest uh, this year, 2019. So I'm probably going to keep running my scabbard rig, but this was a really great launching off point. It helped me prove the concept. And I've said this multiple times. I agreed to make this video because honestly, it was requested that I make a video comparing these different things. I'm not comparing to a uh, 3D printed solution just because it doesn't make sense to compare these to a 3D printed solution. That's a completely different world and honestly, uh, fragile and variable in a way that I don't really want to fool with it. Uh, at this point in time. I think that some of them are neat, um, but this is available on Kickstarter, I think for another 48 hours or so. Uh, it's only available on Kickstarter right now. This will be available forever. Again, they have gotten better. Um, I have nothing but respect for what Boff does. Obviously, local shipping in the UK or Europe is going to be cheaper than it is shipping it to the United States, which is why it vacillates uh, what the price difference between these is, is because shipping is such a huge part of that, uh, but he's getting better all the time. He's been doing it a long time, and this is a hobbyist working for hobbyists, and I've got a ton of love and respect for that. This is a hobbyist working with uh, a elite, best of the best tactical gear manufacturer, and there are, of course, markups that come with that. I am absolutely paying top dollar for John's uh, expertise and to help with the, uh, the designing and the realization and the implementation of this. So it is more expensive, but uh, I'm willing to pay for that kind of expertise, and I figured there would be enough other people. It looks like there's about 50 uh, at this point in time right now who also saw it that way. Uh, and if you do, you're welcome to back it. I'll put a link uh, to Kickstarter for this. I'll put a link to BoffTac uh, for his stuff, which again will be available around the clock if you can't make the scabbard rig. Boff stuff is much nicer even now than it was uh, here. Um, and I probably won't link to AWS, but I will see if I can't find a couple of 3D printed solutions just because uh, I want to be as fair as I possibly can be. But uh, Boff helped me a lot with my prototyping process by building me this, even though it wasn't exactly what I wanted. I wore it to the Minneapolis uh, anti-bullying nerf event, which was sweet. Uh, it did a pretty good job there. I only lost a few magazines during slides. And then I wore it uh, again to, I think, a couple of SCNCs before we finally got around to uh, taking some of that DNA, some SOE, mixing it all together and making something that I'm very proud of and think is truly exceptional. So uh, that's the video. It was requested, again, that I make this. This is not a like, oh, check out how nice this thing uh, that we made in America is versus this thing in the UK versus this thing uh, half China, half US. Um, that is not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to show that at different price points, there are different features that you can take advantage of. And I'm really hoping that somebody starts making tactical gear of this durability because this is great uh, stuff. I think it's all very similar fabric. I forget exactly what it's called, but uh, I would love to see more stuff being chop chopped together from airsoft or Chinesium materials or Army Navy surplus at these price points. I think this was a $22 uh, option back when I picked this up like seven or eight years ago. Uh, whereas this, I think, floats in the, uh, the 30, 40, 50 dollar range, depending upon what your shipping is. And then obviously, Scabbard is much more expensive with a, uh, a three figure price tag. But uh, I personally would rather get exactly what it is that I wanted and make it to the highest spec and possibility. Uh, that I possibly can, and there was nowhere else to go but here. I've been a big fan of SOE for a very long time, as I said before, but I've tried all of the, the flavors and tasted all of the tastes, and that's just my take on it. So uh, feel free to leave a comment if you want to. I 
Uh, just wanted to make this video. This is the closest thing. I've never promoted the uh, scabbard rig in a dedicated video, so I felt like I probably ought to do that since I've done it for all of the other Kickstarters. But I'm tremendously grateful if you're already backing scabbard. I can't wait to put this in your hands and give you something really special. And then uh, if you're going to be at Dragon Con, I will see you uh, very soon. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the show this year. It's the only show I really uh, take to myself and just try and have a blast. So uh, that's the video. Quick comparison, hopefully it was as fair and impartial as somebody who's literally designing a product uh, for manufacturer in this space can possibly be. Obviously I am not impartial, uh, but they were all more or less made to my taste and I think that I am the most visible vocal person in favor of thigh rigs uh, because of my very funky build and play style. So that's my 10 cents, my two cents is free. Much love, Nerf on Jack out.